So let's talk about Snell's law. Snell's law is the quantitative way that we can do refraction. Basically, what we do is we look at a boundary between two media. We've got one index of refraction, N1, another index of refraction, N2. And what we're interested in is the relationship between the angle that the incident ray comes in at off of the normal and the angle that the transmitted or refracted ray comes into the new medium at, again, off of the normal. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to recognize that these angles are measured off of the normal. So these angles are not the angle off of the surface. They're the angle off of the perpendicular guide to the surface. All right, now what Snell's law says is that if you multiply the index of refraction times the sine of the angle, then you get the same value on both sides. So what this allows us to do, for example, if we know both of the indices of refraction and we know the angle of incidence, then we can use Snell's law to calculate the angle of refraction or the transmitted angle. Snell's law is actually a geometric requirement of the fact that parallel light rays stay parallel when they go in, they all turn at the same way, all right? So that if they come in parallel, they're also gonna be parallel inside the new medium. All right, we can understand this just by looking at, um, for example, a flat piece of glass. You've got two parallel light rays that come in, so they're gonna come in at the same index of, or the same, uh, angle of incidence because this is flat. So then they both turn the same amount. The amount that they turn is actually determined by geometry and the fact that the speed of light is slower in the glass than it is in the air. Remember that we know this qualitative idea because glass is like a crowded hallway. So the light is going to bend toward the normal when it goes into the glass. So then it travels through the glass for a little while, and then it comes back out. These guys are still parallel. Comes back out, now it's back in the empty hallway, so it bends away from the normal, again by the same amount. So parallel light rays go through the glass, still parallel on the other side, and that means I won't see distortion when I look through plain glass. All right, let's look at some indices of refraction. So here's a very simple table. Gives us materials, and their index of refraction. Remember that the index of refraction is dimensionless, doesn't have any unit. So air, one, that's also the same as vacuum. There's some other digits over here. Air is not exactly vacuum, but it's close. Water, 1.333. Benzene, salt are the same at 1.5. And diamond has one of the largest bulk indices of refraction that's known, 2.419. All right. So let's go ahead and just do a problem. All right, so suppose that we've got light. It's coming in from water and it's going out at air. Notice that this light beam is qualitatively doing the right thing. It's going into an empty hallway, so it bends away from the normal. Now I wanna know what's that angle. Well, easy enough, we'll use Snell's law. So we'll say 1.333, the index of water, times the sine of the angle in water has to equal the index in air, which is one, times the sine of the angle in air. So all I gotta do is type in my calculator 1.333 times the sine of 30 degrees. You gotta make sure you're in degrees when you're gonna do this. And then I'll do the inverse sine of that. All right, and what you'll end up getting is 41.8 degrees. Very simple. All right, let's do another one. Suppose that I've got light coming in from benzene and going into diamond. All right, now again, here, I've got the um, lower index of refraction having the bigger angle, right? And then it comes in, bends toward the normal. All right, once again, we're just going to use Snell's law. So it'll be benzene, 1.5, sine of the angle in benzene, 60, equals diamond, 2.419 times the sine 
of the angle in diamond. All right, so again, I go to my calculator, 1.5 sine 60, and then I got to divide by 2.419, and then I do the inverse sine of that. And what we find is that the angle is 32 and a half degrees. All right, let's do a more qualitative one. Suppose that I'm given a diagram like this, and I know that this material is salt, and I want to know what could this material be. Well, let's look at it. It doesn't look like it bent at all. So that means that the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of refraction. Snell's law indicates that that means that the speed got to be the same. So that means the index has to be the same. And I look at my table and I see that the guy that has the same index of, refra of refraction as salt is benzene. Not difficult to do, but if you don't know what you're doing, it, it can be confusing. All right, let's look at the next one. Suppose that I've got a situation like this, where I've got light coming in at some angle from diamond, and I don't get a ray coming out in the air. And I want to know, what's the minimum angle possible that this could happen at? Well, this is total internal reflection. The minimum possible angle is going to be the angle at which the refracted ray would go straight along the boundary. Because then if I try to go further, there's no more room left, and I'll only reflect. Total internal reflection. So to get the minimum angle, all I need to do is just use Snell's law and have the refracted angle be 90 degrees. So in air, I've got sine of 90 times 1, so I'm not even going to write it, equals in diamond, I've got 2.419 times sine of the angle. So that means that the angle is the inverse sine of 1 over 2.419, because this is just 1. All right? And when you go through and do that, you'll find that the angle is 24.42 degrees. So that is the maximum angle of incidence that you can leave diamond at if you want to get out. And that's part of the reason that diamonds are so sparkly. All right. Let's go ahead down to the last one. Suppose that I've got light leaving water at 35 degrees and coming into some unknown material, and I measure the refractive index, or I'm sorry, I measure the angle of refraction, and I see that it's 25, and I want to determine the refractive index. All right, once again, Snell's Law. So we'll say water, 1.333 sine of the angle in water, right? And that's got to equal the index that I'm interested in times the sine of 25 degrees. And now all I got to do is divide and I'll end up with an index of, I think it's 1.81. So knowing that index, I can then go and look on a chart like that and determine what could that material be. People who collect gems do this all the time because you can identify a sapphire by the index of refraction, or a diamond by the index of refraction. And so doing it that way, it's actually very easy, and it cuts way down on mistakes. Um, so that's Snell's Law. There's lots of stuff that's very qualitative about it. You always want to make sure that you understand when it bends away, it's speeding up. When it bends toward, it's slowing down. Notice that we ended up with an answer that agrees with that. 1.333 to 1.81. You always want to make sure that your answer makes sense qualitatively because qualitatively, you don't make as many numerical mistakes. Anyway, that's Snell's Law.